Whoops, excuse me. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I do apologize, you guys. I did record these things, and I post them on YouTube. So any parent night that I have, uh, probably a week or two after I do it, I record them, upload them to our school's YouTube page. You guys can go back and watch them if you don't make it to an event. Go there, upload them, usually about a week, week and a half afterwards. Okay? But because of that, I do have to use a microphone. We have a very small crowd, usually do. Um, but that's the reason why. Hopefully it won't be too, too bad. So is that okay? Okay, cool. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, just, you know, oh, first of all, my name is Mr. Reem. Jeff for the parents, Mr. Reem for the kids. Uh, I am the counselor here at the, the high school. Uh, for some of you guys that I maybe don't know super well yet, uh, we will be getting to know each other very well in the next four years, hopefully. And I'll be here to help you guys navigate high school uh, from academics and college to careers to all that personal social drama, life issues, that kind of stuff that goes on. Um, so, you know, anything that you guys need, please feel free to come and approach me. Uh, I'll go over my contact information in just a second. Uh, we do have a lot of information, and I, I am very sorry. Every, every night like this is kind of like drinking from a fire hose. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be very overwhelming. There's going to be a lot of stuff to cover. Just take a deep breath. Don't let your eyes get too big. It'll make sense. Like this is just a lot of stuff coming at you all at once. You can go back, revisit some of these presentations. Uh, I'll share with you guys a great resource that I'm starting to populate that's online with a bunch of handouts that you can maybe get some additional help with as well. Okay. Uh, first of all, I wanted to. It's nice to see some students here. So we are actually going to play a little bit of game. I have some free stuff. Uh, so quickly, guys, I have four questions. Let's see if any of you guys can answer. This one's been kind of hard. I might skip this one. I don't even know this one. All right, so what Ivy League school, and I'm going to take the first hand I see. What Ivy League school or university is the only school in the nation to require students to pass a swim test before earning their diploma? Swim? A swim test. Yeah. Yale? No. No. Other direction. Other direction. It's Cornell. Cornell actually has an old tradition. You actually have to jump in the deep end and swim for 75 yards or else you don't get your diploma. Believe it or not. Uh, so, who got the closest? I see Brown's the closest. You had Brown. All right. You can pick a student to give that to. Anyone you want. If it's your son, anybody in here. All right, one, one or two more. All right, so the average freshman gains how many pounds their first year? Fifteen. Fifteen. No. Five. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with five. It's, it's a range of four to eight. Fifth, the freshman 15 is actually not true. On average, some students do gain 15 or more. On average, the actual average is four to eight pounds in their freshman year. So you can have this little water bag. And wear it on your shoulder. All right, we'll do one more quick one. And let's see if we can get a student to maybe figure this one out. All right, this one I'm going to do closest 1,000. Okay, closest 1,000. When you apply to college, how many U.S. valedictorians do you think you are competing with? So in total, overall college applications, how many valedictorians are there in the United States every single year? Students, take a guess. 3,000, up. Up a little bit. Say that again. What did the last person say? 24,000. I guess it. Don't know? 50,000. 50,000 less. Getting in there. 35,000. 35, less. Less. Close. That's the closest thousand. It's 27,000 valedictorians every single year. All right, so I get a lot of free stuff from colleges, so whenever I try to do things, sometimes they're a little quiz, sometimes it's just you're the first person here, I'll give you a shirt, that kind of stuff. So students, I get free stuff, so please come to my events. Okay, selfless plug over. Let's actually get started. Um, as I'm speaking, I don't know if you saw out there, who is not on my email newsletter yet for the freshmen. 
So you might have another child. I do. Both, I send out targeted emails, so you have to be on both if you have two children in two different grades. You need to be not on my email list yet. <coughs> Perfect. So there's a link out there, but I'm also going to give you this because this well, you can actually do it right now. Basically, what I need you to do, you can start just typing in your stuff there if you want to get some emails. Select the grade and give it to the next person. There's one button on the home page. Click that button. It'll take you right back to this. Okay. Um, just pass it on the next person when you're done. Just that can go on while we're talking. Um, you won't miss too much. Okay. So. Just an over, overview, we're going to go through some of this pretty quickly, a little bit more in depth on a few other pieces. Okay, um, What we're really going to probably camp on is your A through G requirements, so your college entrance requirements. We're going to camp on your overview of your freshman year, and then, exact, and then basically uh, best practices for a freshman. Okay, So what do we need to do as a freshman, parent and a freshman student, to have the best and most likely success throughout the year and throughout our high school career. Okay, uh, feel free, guys. We're a small small audience, so feel free to raise your hand and ask questions. Uh, if your question is really specific, you know, uh, maybe it only applies to your kid. Please, we, that's maybe an email. But if it might apply to other people, go ahead and ask. It's a great opportunity. And then we will at, at the end. This is the link that I'm talking about. You guys might want to write this one down. As I said, it's also on the school's website. Uh, underneath the counseling tab, it's called uh, grade level resource folders. All right, who else needs this? Let me see. And this is a shared Dropbox folder. Anybody use Dropbox in here? If you do, yeah. If you use Dropbox, I have a grade level Dropbox just created with a bunch of PDFs, a copy, PDF copy of this presentation is in there. If you guys have a smart device right now, you can actually pull it up and follow along if you guys want. Um, and things will be added throughout the year. There's only, there's not as much as I would like in there right now, but as we go through and as I get more resources or more presentations, things will be added. So keep checking that uh, out. Everybody got that written down? If you want it. Still see people typing. Again, it's also on the counseling area of the website on the drop-down menu. I can go back in just a second if we need to. Uh, so, how do, how, what am I here for? So I'm here for you guys and the students and teachers um, and colleges. So I have a lot of different a avenues that I work through. Um, I'm, a, I'm a support to parents in terms of like answering questions. Something happens at home, you need some help, you need some advice. I'm a resource that you can turn to. Do I have all the answers? No, I wish I did. Um, but I can usually either answer your question or help you find an answer some other way. Okay, so feel free to bring questions to me, concerns, things that you know you just maybe are bugging you about your kid. How do I how do I stop him from turning in things late? That kind of thing. Okay, I, I have some ways that we can maybe work around some of these common issues. I do utilize my electronic secretary. Okay. That helps me stay sane and it helps me stay organized because I do have other things that you know don't really be, involve me sitting in front of a parent and a kid, um, a lot of office type stuff that I have to take care of. Um, so the online appointment system, anybody used that before? Great. I do use an online appointment system. Again, most of these things that I'm going to be referencing live on the North Tile High School website underneath the counseling menu. Anytime you just hover your mouse over that menu, it's going to give you a drop down. If you actually click on that, it takes you to a deeper level. But most of the, these main links are on that menu when you hover your mouse. Okay, This one's going to say make, make a counseling appointment. When it does that, it actually links to my calendar. I keep a very detailed calendar that has my availability. You can see when I'm available. That way, we're not trying to play phone tag, go back and forth. When can you come? Well, I'm not available now because you know it took me half a day to get back to you. You can make an appointment that's going to ask you for three, at least minimum, three time slots that are open. It'll send me an email. I will confirm that time with you, and we're set. We're ready to go. Okay? Um, it's pretty straightforward. People are starting to get used to it. It might take a little bit of time for the new parents, but I promise it's a pretty painless process. We do use social media, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I do send out updates, uh, resources, 
information from colleges, uh, reminders, that kind of thing. So if you're on Facebook, go ahead and follow, and you might be following the, the North Tyler High School page. I also have a counseling page that I do post things uh, that might be of interest to you or your family. Uh, and then again, that newsletter, and there's that, that address once again. Um, and then again, please don't be afraid to ask me questions. Sometimes like you, pe people will wait and not ask the question that's kind of really, you know, they want to ask, and then it will, become, it, will be, it will go from a question to a problem, you know, and then you're upset, and then we have to fix something instead of addressing something before it becomes an issue. So please don't be afraid to approach me uh, with questions I'm, I'm very happy to answer. All right, so there are some very helpful norms, or loosely translated as rules, um, that help kind of the whole relationship, this whole ecosystem of a high school kind of work together, okay? There's some very important parent norms, okay? You, as parents, your job is to help your son or daughter grow into a tax-paying, productive adult in the next four years. Okay, and hopefully college will help along that process or the next job or training. But your job right now mainly is to encourage and support them to be good students. Okay, help them find the way without necessarily pulling them along by their ear or holding their hand the entire way. Part of the process of becoming this adult is learning to do things on their own. I'm very much, you'll learn this about me, I'm very much a, okay, that's, that's nice that you want me to do this, how are, how are you going to do that to, to really take on that responsibility? I'm very much giving the responsibility back to the family, to the kids, because that's where that learning begins and why that learning grows, not from me doing everything for you or for your student. Okay? I'm happy to support, help you guys find, but really I'm going to challenge you guys sometimes to do some of the work. Uh, just like teachers might challenge students to do some of the work in the classroom, that's where the learning happens. Okay? Start using that college language, that work language, that high academic language at home. Okay? Doesn't matter if you went to college, maybe you didn't go to college, come talk to me, I can teach you some nice academic language that you can start using. Because that language, if you don't learn it now, when you start having to actually use it and read it and understand it, just like not using, not using biology language, you might not understand what it means when it comes to the important things like tests or applications. Okay, so start using some of those languages, that language, uh, at home. You'll learn some of that language as we go through this year. Uh, and then help them stay on track. That doesn't mean planning their day minute by minute. It means, okay, so you have a, a big deadline uh, on Friday, you have a test, or you have something due. Help them just keep it, keep a calendar. One of the biggest things that any freshman and even sophomores can learn this entire year is how to manage their time well. There's a lot of freedom, there's a lot of ability in the high school world, and I'm talking to you guys students too, a lot of ability in the high school to, one, slack off. You know, there's not someone looking over your shoulder every second of the day, and it gets even worse as you get older because you're starting to be that responsible student, hopefully. And there's also a lot of, of ability for you to take your learning into your own hands. You get to choose the classes you might want to take. You get to have an idea of where you're going to school. Okay, so instead of it just kind of following along, it's becoming your opportunity to take it into your own hands now. Okay, but parents help them see the light, don't drag them through the light. Okay, students, start imagining where you want to be. The day that you step foot on this high school is the day that your college and your after high school life begin. Your freshman year is your foundation to secondary and post-secondary education, training, whatever it might be. If you decide that this is not the route that you want to go, and I'm looking here, I'm not seeing too many of the students that might want to do that, but if you decide that this is not the educational route you want to take, then you're going to have to maybe repeat a class. And we'll talk about the A through Gs. There are things in there that ninth grade really impacts. And if you have a bad one because you're making bad choices, you're not engaged, you're not ready to learn, you're not here to be a high school student, then it's going to be a bad beginning of your high school career at least. 
and there's going to be some extra things that are going to fall on your shoulders to have you complete. Okay, so just start the year well. If you're having trouble, if you're struggling, ask questions. Your teachers are not that scary. The people in the office aren't that scary. We're here to help you. We don't want anybody to fail or get behind, just like you don't really want to fail or get behind. So reach out and ask those questions. Don't be afraid to, you know, they might, you might think that we're going to be mad at you for asking the question, we won't. Okay? Pay attention to deadlines. Deadlines are super important, especially as you get older, uh, but it's a good habit to start practicing now. I will, I do put deadlines on things when things are due, and I stick to my deadlines, okay? Because I think that trains students and parents what that means. Okay? If you turn in something late for work, you're gonna get in trouble, or worse. If you turn something in late for me, you might not be able to do that thing that you might want to do, okay? I'm not unreasonable, but I'm also, trying to teach you guys some great tools and some life lessons, okay? And then lastly, create relationships with staff and teachers. I just had a senior parent night last night with all the senior parents, and some of them were like, man, I wish I would have made relationships with the staff and teachers. Because when you get to be a junior and senior, you're going to start needing things like letters of recommendation. You're going to start needing personalized advice about where you're going to apply to college or what kind of job you're going to get. All these things require someone to know you. If I don't know you, or a teacher doesn't know you on a personal level, not just a grade on a piece of paper, you're not gonna be able to get a very strong letter of recommendation. You're not gonna be able to get that piece of knowledge that you might want to tell you, this is a great school for you because I know you really love that engineering class and they have downhill skiing, okay? So, so that's an important piece and this is where you start that piece. If you start off your relationships now and you start them off well and positively, they will grow into, into almost a professional friendship. Many teachers are, are like friends. They will do anything for their kids that they really have a strong relationship with. You know, you, you need to leave for a month because something happened. Teachers will work with you and they're more likely to be happy about that if they have a strong relationship, okay? Any questions so far? All right. Just quickly gonna kinda go over some expectations of me, okay? Uh, I usually only do this with a freshman because this is new for you guys. Uh, so my expectations and my goals are this. I expect and I plan to try to get all students to be A through G ready. Now I'm gonna go through those requirements in a minute, but A through G ready means that you are able to apply you have the privilege to submit your application to the CSU and the EC system. Okay, and it's a typical minimum kind of college expectation that you've completed this set of curriculum for most colleges across the United States. So I'm hoping that all students will meet that. And I'm here to answer questions and my goal is to help every single student be as successful as they can and try to do whatever it takes within my ability to help them to do that. Okay, so that is something you can expect and ask of me and expect to see those those things happen, okay? So things that are like a little bit fuzzy that people might think of me, um, or as of a school counselor in general, or maybe even a staff member at the school, is that it's my job to do this and that and the other thing for your student, okay? Uh, some of those things, yes, um, but some of those things are, are your student's job, okay? And again, dead spot. Uh, with that responsibility piece, I might turn that right back and say, okay, Let's work together on this, okay? So I, I, am, I, I might, you know, there might be the words no, or let's try something different uh, at certain points in your kid's educational career, okay? Not because I don't want to support, I'm here to support because some things are best learned by doing. Cal Poly is a learn by doing school. It's, it's a great model and it teaches students through the process, not just ha after the process and the results. Uh, I don't work 24-7, believe it or not. Uh, I do check emails pretty often, though. Uh, so if you guys email me, I do get them on my phone, on my devices, that kind of thing. I usually don't check them fa fairly often in the evening. I like I have a family, I have a wife, I'm married, I have a wife, I have a dog, no kids yet. Um, but, you know, everyone likes their family time and I like to respect your guys' family time. Uh, so if I, if I don't get back to you right away, uh, I usually try to have a 24-hour turnaround on all emails. Phone calls sometimes take a little bit longer for messages, okay? 
I, again, I don't have all the answers, but I'm very research, resourceful. I can find answers that might I might not have off the top of my head. I know a lot of people in, in a lot of great places to look. And then I can bench 400 pounds. Maybe in high school, but not right now. Um, all right, so so kind of the, the paperwork, the, the organizational piece aside, now we're going to kind of get into how to actually be a freshman and how to be a parent of a freshman. Okay, So here are some common problems that freshmen will usually run themselves into. One I like to call the CFC, the lack of consideration of future consequences. Meaning, students at, at, at this age and even at the senior age, there is literally a physical inability to comprehend the results of your actions at the time you're making them. Your brain is not fully developed. You are missing, or you have an underdeveloped area of your brain that is able to look forward and see the consequences of an action that you might take. So that might look like deciding, I don't want to do my homework because I have video games to play. It might look like the other side of the spectrum of, I'm going to go to this party, I'm going to drink, and I'm going to get in a car with another person who did too, and drive home. Okay? There's that whole realm of possibilities that this lack of kind of growth of your brain, that it's not anything wrong with you, it's just where you're at in your human development, gets in the way of. Okay? The biggest thing that we see at school is the social aspect of, I'm just going to say whatever I want to say, I don't really care who it affects, and you know it's not bullying, it's, it's just having fun. Those are all things that this can affect. The other side is the academic side, where I'm going to get my act together junior year. Uh, I'm going to use freshman and sophomore year to kind of have fun, hang out, you know, play with my friends, it's still middle school, they'll let me pass, that kind of thing. Okay? Those things are things that we need to start considering, and this is where a parent can come in and say, hey, look, you know, you have a C right now. You know, we may not, we may not, not necessarily have to have A's all the time, but your C, I don't think you're putting your full effort into your class. There's some time that you're not spending outside of school that you might be able to spend a little more time with on your homework. If you guys pick up in the back, there's a piece of paper called the one to two. Okay? There's a slide in here, I'm not just going to talk about it right now because it's kind of in the flow of things, but that one to two slide, there's two pieces of paper. One is kind of the student focused one, that's the one page with all the pretty graphics. The other thing is like a little staple piece of paper that kind of is a little more explanation to parents. That one to two, uh, we started this last year. And we're really starting to kind of pick this up. That one to two hours is based, uh, Cal Poly again, uh, they started a program called the 30 to 40. It's not uh, 30, 30 to 40 hours a day, obviously, but 30 to 40 hours a week. Because college students uh, are not, they've done a study, they're not successful uh, without spending that much time outside of class, studying, absorbing, practicing what they're learning in class. So we adapted that, I adapted that to the high school level. Okay? So essentially what the one to two means is every student, it doesn't matter what level you are, you could be an AP level student, you could be uh, you know, just learning English. It doesn't matter anywhere in between. Every single student, and this is a great opportunity for parents to use this as there's no excuses anymore. Uh, every student can be expected to be studying one to two hours every single night of the week. It doesn't matter if you have homework or not. Okay, there's always things that you can be doing. Okay, this one or two hours, it's about 10 hours a week, uh, that's, that's bare minimum. When you get older, when you go to college, when you get into some AP classes, it might look like two to three hours a night, okay? High school is, is a very intensive program, and it's designed to be that way. However, many times students and parents will think, well, I think 45 minutes a night is reasonable because they have sports and they have all these other things, okay? You know, from my standpoint, if all these things are getting in the way of your students' academics, we need to figure out what needs to go. Because your student is here to be a student, not to be a pro basketball player, right? I, you know, I think that's generally an accepted idea, uh, that high school is supposed to be about school, not necessarily about all the other extracurriculars that are outside of school, which make it fun, but if they're affecting what your main purpose is, you know, there's some decision making that might have to happen, some conversations at home that we might need to look at. Okay, um, so that is that is something that you guys can do. I always suggest parents uh, setting up a time every single day that's consistent. That consistency is key. Trying to find a time, whether it's you know 45 minutes before, right when you get home from practice or school, 
you have dinner, and then 45 minutes after dinner. And then you're free if you're finished with your work. Um, and setting, making it a habit for students. Saying, okay, it's homework time. It might be parents. You guys come up to, with an agreement with your kids that during these 45 minutes time, you're going to check in your phone with me. I'll give it back to you at the end. Many times those distraction pieces are big. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll sometimes say, well, I need to use it for, for my homework. Uh, maybe. Uh, if, you have a, if you have a computer or a laptop or something like that, that might be a better opportunity. Uh, but really, you know, I, I see students saying, well, I'm studying for three hours every night. Okay, tell me about your studying session. Well, I opened my book, and then I started texting and surfing the web, and then I got back to studying. And really, that three hours, they spent about 20 minutes doing actual studying. Okay, so think about if that's your kid or not. If it is, that might be something you look at in terms of your home kind of organization. I'm sorry, my email is blowing up apparently. Um, that's what that noise is for. Uh, again, making that relationship, many freshmen, a pitfall that they will fall to is not speaking with any school staff. They'll just walk around like this. I'll say, hey, how's it going? Good. Okay. And they'll walk by. They won't ever like, engage with any teachers or adults. Uh, mainly because they're nervous, it's new, they're younger, you guys are younger, um, and it's a little bit more difficult to engage with, with adults uh, as, as not your parent and that kind of thing. But don't be afraid. Ask the questions, engage, start making those relationships happen. And they create academic holes. What an academic hole is, is that they will maybe excel in all of their classes, but really hate their English teacher. And they will do anything they have to do to like not do work for their English teacher for some odd reason. And they will fail or get a D in English. Okay? That is an academic hole that now has to be filled somehow. That might mean taking two English classes the next year. You know, especially if it's an F. It's a D. For college purposes, that will be repeating that class. Okay? For graduation purposes, it's a little different story. And I'll briefly talk about our grading and graduation requirements and all that stuff. Um, you can't see that, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, that's all the A through G, it's broken down over here, we'll go through. So these are the A, I'm going to talk about A through G, so we're going to make a little bit of a transition into four-year colleges. Yes, you have to start thinking about four-year college now, okay? Things, like I said, the things you do this year affect your opportunities that you will have when you do start applying for colleges, like most seniors this year are starting to do now. Okay, so these A through G requirements, uh, first of all, there are A through G, so however many numbers that is, I don't even know off the top of my head. Uh, they are broken down, so each letter is a different academic subject, okay? Uh, for example, A is history. Uh, so there, there is a history requirement that you have to complete to be eligible, and I'm going to use this word eligible because this is, this is not being competitive, there are two different things. Eligible means you can submit, competitive means you are likely to be admitted to any school of your choice. Okay, so el we're talking eligibility, and, and there's opportunity to go beyond this within your schedule as a senior if you're making good academic progress. Uh, so history, all these classes, A through G, must be passed with a C minus or better, or they do not count, okay, for college purposes. A D in English, nine, one semester even, will mean you, for college, if you want to apply, you need to retake that semester of English nine, okay? So that is some motivation, both parent and student, to if you want that to be an option, or you want that to be an option for your kid, help them to at least get a C. A C won't kill students, you know, a couple of them may start, you know, getting you out of the Harvard range, but most colleges, if you have a C in your transcript, it's not the end of the world, okay? Um, History, so A, we're gonna go through these pretty quickly. These are our history classes that we will have. Ninth graders do not have history. Okay, so don't worry if you're like, I don't have history, what do we do? Uh, don't worry about it, you have history next year. We'll start with model history, you'll take US history junior year and AP government, or government and econ your senior year. The US history and government and econ have an AP level. AP stands for advanced placement. Advanced placement is essentially, you can think of it as a college level course taught at a high school, okay? They, these are all year-long classes that you can take uh, that culminate at the end with a self-pay but a uh, big reward exam that you can take that these classes prepare you for called the AP tests. 
these AP tests, if you pass them at a certain level, when you apply to colleges, depending on how you score, colleges can actually grant you college credit for that test. So say for example, you took AP English 11 and 12 in your junior and senior year, and you passed them, you can send those to your schools, those scores to your schools that you're going to in college. You might not ever have to take a freshman level English class. Okay, so you can get some stuff out of the way. It's important because it helps you get through college faster, and parents, it saves you money. The tests are expensive, they're like $90 now. Uh, they may go up, they're kind of like, every year they're bumping them up because they're more, more expensive. But $90 is nothing compared to one class at a college. So it's a good investment, it's a good way to spend your money. We'll talk more about AP stuff in depth as you get to more of your junior year, okay? Because you guys, there won't be any AP really level work for you guys until typically your junior level year. All right, so let's move along. We're gonna go through these pretty quickly. English. Uh, you're going to need four years of English. All four years, you must pass English with a C, minus or better, uh, English 9, 10, 11, 12, with their AP and honors options. Okay, pretty straightforward. This is also a graduation requirement. So is a history requirement. Um, the only thing different between those graduation and college is that grade. Okay, so you can graduate with a D. You cannot go to college with a D in these classes. Uh, so C, math. Uh, when you're looking up here, these black ones are required. Uh, the, the green ones are uh, recommended. Okay, and that's where you have the opportunity to really go. That's where we go from being eligible to being competitive. Okay, uh, so math. Some of you guys are starting in algebra one. Some of you guys are starting in geometry. The only real difference is that kind of depends a little bit on how far you can get in a normal four-year sequence of math. If you're starting in algebra, you'll probably get to pre-calculus. Uh, if you're starting in geometry, you probably can get into AP calculus. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. If you're beyond that, there's other options that we can talk about. But three years at least, you really should be taking four years of math. Wah, 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 yeah. uh, lab science. Okay, as you can see up here, two years are required. You have to have a physical, so that's like physics and chemistry, or a biological science, which is biology and depending on if we have it, phys, uh, anatomy and physiology. Okay, those are the two or three different options if you have. AP environmental science would fall underneath this physical requirement, uh, and physics would fall underneath that physical requirement. Okay, so you have to have two years, one of each of those classes, 99% of students will have that met for, for their high school graduation requirements. Uh, and then those three and four years, taking all those, some of those extra AP level classes, uh, extending your science into the next couple of years uh, is really to help you be competitive. And, and most students who are going to be applying to CCUs, UCUs, will take three at least, okay? Three is usually the bare minimum, and it usually goes biology, chemistry, physics, and like an AP. That's that third year can be an AP level course if you, if you choose. Uh, that's something we can look at when we do our kind of four year plans. Uh, e. LOAT, so LOAT is an acronym that stands for Language Other Than English. And again, this is online, so guys, if you guys are like madly writing things down, copying down what's up here, you can just download the PDF. It's pretty, it looks just like that. <laughs> um, language Other Than English, the only, the only language we have here is Spanish. Uh, there are some online options if that wasn't for you. The important thing to note is you must take two years of the same language for this. Okay, so if you're starting in Spanish 1, you have to take Spanish 2. You cannot take Spanish 1 and French 1. That doesn't count. Two years of the same language. If, for those of us that are either native Spanish speakers or on the immersion program, Spanish 3 for Spanish speakers will clear this requirement, but you really should keep on going. Okay, you should go take that as far as you can. One, it's a great skill to have, and two, it looks really good on college, college applications. Any questions so far? We're almost done with this piece, and then we can move on. But any questions that are popping up right now? We're not sure. I'm going next Monday. I'm going down to Sacramento for a CSU UC conference, and I'm, I'm assuming I'll learn a little bit more about what that transition is going to look like. They sent out some generalized emails, like, "Yes, it will change some stuff, but we don't know what that's going to look like yet." Um, same thing with like our integrated math programs and that kind of thing. So we're it's kind of a big transitional phase for a lot of, especially the higher ed, because they are usually behind, actually, the system change. And so they have to figure out ways that it will work. Whatever happens, like, 
we this will be updated, but anytime things are changed, students are usually grandfathered in if they've already gone through like this process uh, and like something happens in the middle of your junior year or something like that, they've completely changed these things, they will take it back to account that you had three years when that change wasn't there. Good question. And if, uh, what, two more. Uh, it's really actually VAPA, V-A-P-A, Visual and Performing Arts. There's actually an art requirement for college. You must take one year, a full year of an art. Uh, band, art, photo, ceramics, jazz band, jazz, uh, I think jazz ensemble is actually a good gym crew. The reason why these are all listed in some of these classes you won't see, like PE, or your vocational requirements, that kind of stuff, you won't see up here because all these classes have to go through an approval process with the University of California. So we send, we send our syllabi up there, they approve it and send it back and it gets put on a list every single year. That is why these classes are very specific. Then finally, your CPE, your college prep elective. Okay, um, When we hired Mr. Padilla this year, he got a packet of probably six pages of acronyms. I probably should make that available to you guys. Um, that education has to deal with because it's there's a lot um, and I'll try to do my best to explain them if you guys have questions and I just spout off some random acronyms stop me and ask me what that means um, I may not even know but I'll do my best uh, college prep elective is any other A through G in the past and there's a few specific ones that fall only underneath this category like uh, our, our physical science class that's not physics or chemistry it's actually a separate class um, that doesn't meet a lab science requirement. Uh, our AP psychology class, that kind of thing, fits underneath here. Most students are going to be taking like that fourth year of, of science, those two or three years of math. This, that, those classes will actually fill this. People don't usually have to worry about this, this requirement. Okay. All right. Any questions about A through G? You do have to take SATs. We'll talk a little, a little bit about some of the testing that will be coming up. And I'm trying to keep it on our time. I know that uh, it's about probably got about 20 minutes left. I would guess. Mr. Reed, yeah. At what point can students or can they uh, take classes at the college? Uh, so technically, they can take classes right now. However, there are not classes really that will be appropriate for your son or daughter until junior year. In most cases. For example, English 1A, it doesn't fill your English 9 or 10 requirement, it fills English 11 or 12. So in most cases, when you become a junior or senior, you really start taking it. Um, one, of the, one of the good things about it is they have several different offerings and they, they cycle through every year. Um, some of the bad things is Sharpie is very limited on their course offering. So you're not going to find advanced languages, very advanced mathematics, that kind of thing. It's mainly useful for English and history. Uh, in, in all honesty. Uh, did that answer your question? Yeah, so typically students will start looking at that junior and senior year. Uh, and there's the process, that we won't talk in depth about that, but there is some process behind that application process. Uh, so freshman year overview. What do we need to be looking at? Your first job as a freshman is to be successful at school. You have to be 100% focused on what you're doing here because that will change, like I said, your outcomes at the end. Okay. Uh, your grades matter. You, you really need to worry about like your grades, but if you are sacrificing, and, and not really learning, if you're like some people where you can gloss over a piece of paper, you memorize it for three days and that's enough for the test, you get by on the test, but then you completely forget everything. Sometimes I do that. You're not doing yourself a service. These classes here build on each other. So the classes that you go into, your English classes, your math classes, your some of your history type classes, your next class is going to depend on what you learned in this year's class. Okay, so really focus on actually learning the content. It might be maybe you don't get the you don't get the A plus, maybe you get an A minus because you spend more time actually memorizing, like engaging and learning about the content rather than just trying to memorize it, spit it out, and then forget about it. Okay, so really focus on learning the content because that's going to help you carry through throughout your academics. Um, grading, oh, I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, learning the academics and educational system. Doesn't mean like learn how it works, but learn how it works for you. Okay, how many people know, have an idea of what type of learner you are? What type of learner are you? 
Kinetic, great. What's that? Visual. So visual, kinetic, auditory, okay? Uh, those are typical three that you see. When you learn, you learn it the best. You can learn many different ways, but you typically have a best way that you learn. Your most preferred, the easiest it is for you to understand. And education is more fun, it's more impacting, and more you, you retain more content when you learn in the fashion that you are best at. Okay, so if you're a kinetic learner, that means that, you know, maybe reading from a book is not the most engaging and most memorable aspect of what you're trying to learn, right? That means that sometimes you might have to go, okay, one, two, three, four, five, right? And like use your fingers to count, or like visualize, or not visualize, but like use your hand, oh, this is the brain, okay? And this is the core, you know, this brain stem, that kind of thing. Okay, there's different ways, and if you actually engage, uh, I'll probably do some work uh, during RTI, I do workshops, stuff like that. I'll probably do something like that, not right off the bat, maybe a little bit later in the fall, uh, that I'll send out invitations to regarding how, how to learn, how to study, that kind of stuff, okay? When you think about that, think about what type of learner you are. I'm, a, I'm an auditory learner. I listen and I can remember, but I'm not a kind of learner. So the person next to you, if you're studying together, may need totally different tools. And a teacher, you may have to learn how to learn from a teacher by supplementing something else, because they might not necessarily teach in the fashion that you are best a receiver. So you need to learn that's a process, it's not just like you're going to go like that and have it. Learn how to actually receive that information in your best way that you can in that learning style. Okay? Keep organized. Do uh, you guys use folders? Anybody use a phone calendar? Good for you. Me too. Um, keeping your calendar, keeping yourself organized with dates, but also keeping your backpack organized. I've looked into some people's backpacks, especially freshmen, and they're like black holes. They disappear, things just like go in there and nothing comes out. Okay? They'll, I'll give them a piece of paper to take home and come back. Where to, you know, they'll go home nice and crisp and clean and they'll come back and it's like got a bite out of it, candy spilled all over it, crumpled up. I don't know what happened to it. It must have gone through the wash or something like that. But try to keep things nice and organized. Your life is much easier. You're not going to be scrambling, where did my homework? What did I do with this? Okay? Get some binders, get some dividers, some folders. What I did with some middle school students that also applies to high school uh, is get a folder for every single homework piece of homework that's due every single day. I would make it like red or pink or something that's bright. And when you're doing your homework, don't stuff it in your backpack. Stuff it in that folder, get into the habit of every single class. You pull out that thing, you look through it, see if there's anything to turn in. If there is, you turn it in. If not, you put it right back and you move on to your next class. Maybe you have one for any assignments that they give you, handouts that you have to do. So your homework that needs to be done and homework that needs to be turned in. These are all ways that you can be organized and help yourself avoid some of the problems that are naturally occurring. And if you come to my office, I'm not always the neatest person. I go through like a monthly purge where my desk is just dirty and then I figure out, okay, what's important, what's not important. Maybe you need to do that with your backpack too. What needs to stay, what's garbage, or what needs to be taken out. I do the same thing and it's very helpful and it helps you to feel better about yourself. Uh, and again, that student relationship. Secondly, get involved in school. Find something to get involved in, whether it's a sport, there's a few clubs, we don't have as many clubs as like Truckee and some of the other schools you might know of, just because our student size is so small. Um, and most of the clubs that happen during RTI, we have a lot of students that need to go to an RTI. Um, so, so find something to get involved in. Uh, you know, whether it's a band program, uh, leadership, uh, youth in action, Latina pride, all these different programs that go on are ways that you make connections to other students, but also ways that you make connections to school and find ways that you're not just like having to drag yourself to school every day where you, you can actually be excited to come to school. It's okay. People can be excited to come to school. Some days, like I do the same thing with work. Like, yeah, I've got to go to work. Some days, like, yes, i got to go to work. Okay? Same thing you do with you guys. Be excited to come to school. Um, some, some things to do. These are things you may want to jot down uh, or pull up later to look at. Uh, first thing would be set up an appointment with me, not this week or like maybe not even this month. Swamped with like seniors right now. Um, but like a little like mid fall, early spring ish. 
uh, to go over a four-year plan. Okay, that involves us coming and sitting down. We'll look at kind of what what our schedule is now. Try to plan out kind of our schedule, what our schedule looks like. Maybe some some ideas of dates. Figure out what it's going to look like for the next four years. Okay, we're going to take honors English nine, honors English ten, AP English eleven, and AP English twelve. Okay, that's what our, our next four years of English is going to look like. Let's look at our science now. Okay, we're taking biology, chemistry. We may want to take AP physics, or we may want to take AP environmental science. That helps us give give us a future set of courses to look forward to, and also know how to plan. Okay, because those are important pieces that you have to consider as you're going through high school. You can also talk about important dates and, and things that are coming up each year that you might need to remember, like testing or uh, community service, that kind of thing. The, I would say in the beginning, a parent should be involved. I would say the first maybe two years, I, I, I'll make it kind of a joint meeting where, where mom or dad comes, or a guardian comes, and sit down, we can talk together. Because, you know, as you get older, you're going to start learning as the student gets older, you're going to start learning about what school looks like, what needs you're going to have, what things you're going to be favored about, and, and really understand what classes you actually want and what you need. And you can start making some of those decisions on your own. But right now, it's like a whole new ball game. And so you guys might need some guidance. And, you know, I have freshmen. I want six classes of BE. Uh, no. Um, you guys might have different wants and desires and direction that maybe you want to help your student realize what that's going to look like. Okay, so I would suggest freshman and sophomore year, let's do that together. Um, it also helps us create a relationship too. We can sit down, I can get to know you, you can get to know me a little bit better, and we can, you know, kind of work together as a team to help the educational piece move along. Okay? Um, we use a program. You guys won't have it quite yet. Uh, it's kind of, we're doing a big update piece in the next two weeks or so. There's a program that you'll hear us start calling, and it's called Navient's Family Connection. Okay? This is an online tool that students have that has two sides. It has a side for me where I can use things. I can go onto a student's account, look at activities they've done, uh, information about like their learning style if they did the inventory. There's a career piece that, that's along with it and a huge college piece. Um, we will start working on that. We, have, we won't have it yet, so don't go home and look for it. Like, I missed something. Um, it will come out probably next. You'll probably have it by the end of, uh, probably the end of September, first week of October, I would guess. Um, these things are things that you'll probably be working in your Pathways classes with. Um, you'll do career research, you'll do learning style inventories, you'll, you'll answer some questions and they'll spit back, well, you know, anybody did like the Myers-Briggs test before, where it gives you the four letter codes about what careers might be good for you. There's one of those in there. It's a huge tool and it also helps us collect information to help, you know, drive what's going on at school. Okay, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it's very important and you guys will get it and we will help you with it. But there is some important piece that you guys can do once we get that out to you. Uh, start that college and career research. Really right now, as freshmen, there's not going to be a whole lot to research for colleges in four years, but all that information is going to be out of date. Um, you can start, if you guys are traveling, one thing I will tell you, if you're ever traveling anywhere, make some stops at colleges. The biggest thing that helps students like or change their mind or explore and find new colleges that they've never even heard of is, you know, you're driving down to LA, stop in Fresno and go to Fresno State. Whatever, you know, take 45 minutes, plan an extra hour and a half to go and take a school tour. Take a tour if they have it available. If not, just park and go walk around. Look at the campus. You might not get the full picture, but Sometimes going to that campus will make or break a school. It'll look great on paper, but you go there, it's like, man, this is the ghetto. I don't want to live here. You know, and it's dangerous and ugly and all this other stuff. And, you know, that's an important piece to consider when you're looking at colleges. Um, so just do that. Plan that. And that's over the next four years. You know, if you, if you visit three colleges a year, that's nine or ten colleges by the time you're actually ready to look. Most seniors, you need seven to ten colleges on your list to apply to. Coincidence? Uh, it might be the, one of those colleges you're looking at. The careers piece is what is most important right now. Because your college applications, you're looking at any type of college, two-year or four-year, or trade school, 
Those colleges are based on what you want out of that college. You don't pick a college and then pick a major. Because, I mean, you might pick a major they might not even have. Uh, you pick a major, you pick an outcome, a career field that you want to focus on, and then you pick your, your school based on that program that you're looking for. Uh, so, so really, the first two years of high school, what you'll be doing, doing a lot of pathways, guys, and what information will be coming out from me will be primarily focused towards helping you figure out your aspirations as a, a, you know, as a career person to be able to help you make those college decisions a little bit later. We make that transition to more college, usually around the middle of your 10th grade year. Okay, so you're starting to learn a lot about yourself and what things you might want out of college, and then we start looking at the narrow picture of what college you might want to go to. Parents start saving money. Um, college is very expensive. If you have anything saved, students too. Anybody have summer jobs? Not yet, maybe next year. Uh, if you guys have summer jobs, put some money aside. Make an agreement with your parents that says, hey, you know what, if I put away this much money, maybe you'll match it. And that can be used to, for things from paying for rent, to paying for textbooks, to buying a new laptop, because you'll probably need a laptop when you go to college. Those are things that you have to plan ahead for. Uh, you do have financial aid, but things like, some of those things aren't necessarily, you know, they don't fall underneath financial aid. So you need to have some money set aside. I'm a firm believer that students should be a part of that saving process too. You're not a piggy bank, they don't just come up and ask for money. They should also be able to put, some, put aside some of their savings. You know, let them have some fun, pay for a phone or whatever it's gonna be. But set up an agreement that you know 20% of your paycheck is gonna go into a savings account that will hopefully grow. You might not have 500 bucks by the time you graduate, but you know, that's 500 bucks, that's a month of rent, okay? So just think about that as you're going through. Uh, I skipped one. Uh, the scheduling piece, that's kind of the big piece on people's minds in my table right now, it is working with schedules and changing schedules and that kind of stuff. Take a rigorous schedule, okay? Don't, most freshmen have a pretty typical schedule. As you go along, you have the ability to, you know, take unscheduled periods, TA periods, that kind of thing. If you want to meet those A through G, if you want to go to a good college, challenge yourself. That is where the learning happens. It's not, you know, it, it can get hard and there is something to be said about taking too much. Uh, most students aren't taking too much, unless you're gonna take like seven AP classes, that's ridiculous, don't do that. But you can take three or four AP classes when you're a junior and survive. You have to be willing to commit, but you know, it's, it's what you want out of the class, what we need to put into it and decide how we're gonna pick those classes. That is one reason why doing that four-year plan is kind of important. We can look forward to what each year is going to look like and try to spread things out to make it more of a balanced approach. Lastly, uh, start to look for volunteer opportunities. One, for community service. How many of you guys know that we have a community service requirement? Okay, how many hours, freshmen? Six hours as a freshman, and then you have eight hours the remaining three years minimum. Okay, a um, couple things that I'll talk about real quick about community service. It must be documented. There's a form that you have to fill out. It actually has a pre-volunteer form that you need to sign. Okay, this includes a parent signature, and that's the biggest piece that we want. You, we want to know that if your kid's going up picking up trash on the side of the road, you know they're there, you know the risks that are inherently involved in doing that. Okay, so there's a pre-signed sheet that takes some planning on your guys' part that oh, I'm just gonna go show up at this thing, it might not count. You might get a good pat on the back, you might be able to put it on your resume, but for the hour requirement, we might say it wasn't pre-approved. So, you know, good job. Sorry, you know, you still have six hours to do. Okay, so just think ahead and try to do that as best you can. Um, and then log the hours and get the sign up. Second thing is it has to be for a nonprofit organization. You cannot go to your uncle's business file papers while he's getting paid for that and doing free work. That's not community service, that's volunteering for your uncle. Um, it doesn't count. Uh, think about, what is that one? Oh, if you, so say for example, you're a go-getter and you wanna do 30 hours of community service your first year. So how many hours do you need total by the time you graduate? 
30. So, 6, 8, 8, 8. Uh, you need 30 hours by the time you graduate, cumul cumulatively. But say you do that, you do 30 hours, you're like ready to go, you're super passionate about volunteering at Pet Network, and you, you love the dogs and cats. You go do 30 hours, that's great. Six of those hours are gonna count towards your pathways grade. You will still be held responsible for 888 for your pathways grade. Your community service yearly requirement is tied to that grade in that kind of advisory period. Um, that period is a pass fail, okay? But a fail will make you ineligible for sports, okay? So when you're doing community service, keep in mind, you can't go ahead and that's great. I encourage you to do as many community service hours as you want. It looks awesome, awesome, awesome on any college application. But document it, keep it with you, because you have to remember the exact amount of time when you're a senior. So keep a file, keep a folder somewhere that you can go back and reference every year that you can look back as a senior and say, yeah, I did 30 hours with this group, 20 hours here, 15 hours here, on your applications. Okay, but keep in mind, if you do 30, you're still gonna have to do eight, eight, eight every single year, okay? Uh, and I keep track of that. All the paperwork goes to your Pathways teacher, it doesn't come to me, and the Pathways teachers work with me, and I kind of coordinate everything. So I know there's probably gotta be some questions about community service. No? No? Okay, there usually is. Uh, they will probably come up. That packet that went home, if you guys saw it, it's pretty, has a good description about what is and is not community service. So like babysitting for your, you know, your family member, that's not community service, that kind of thing. It really has to be impacting the community in general as a whole. Okay, so think, use that filter when you're kind of seeing if this is an appropriate event or not. Okay, that one to two, we kind of talked about it. I'm gonna skip over this. All right, PSAT, we're a year ahead, but I wanna throw it out there for you guys because this is something that you can maybe start thinking about now. Okay, the PSAT stands for the Practice SAT Test. So the SAT is a big college admissions test which will totally change by the time you guys are seniors, like completely change. Um, so you can take the SAT or the PSAT, I'm hoping that they will update it for next year, for those of you that will be taking it as sophomores. Um, but just know, like, it's a good thing that you can start thinking about. These entrance tests take practice. They take studying and they take preparation. The more that you spend time studying, the more you spend time learning about this stuff, the stronger you're gonna be. It pays off in college admissions, it pays off in financial aid and scholarships. So it's, it's a great opportunity for you to increase your opportunities in college or, or community college or, or any avenue of life that you're gonna to go to, okay? Most schools will require either an ACT or an SAT test, which are the two big ones. These PSATs are practice Currently, all 10th graders, we pay for all 10th graders to take the test, and then all juniors have the opportunity to pay $15 to take it. Um, I'm anticipating that's gonna stay the same. You're not gonna be taking that this year. Uh, the only test that you would have taken would have been the plan, however, the ACT, which is the other test, discontinued that this year. Uh, I'm looking at the alternative, but it doesn't look like it's all the way rolled out, so there may not be any tests for you guys this year. Um, I will give you guys more information as I get it about that piece. Yes, we talked about this. Transcripts. Quickly, I'm just, you can't really see it, so I'm not going to show you this, but I encourage you to go online and look at it. This is what a transcript looks like. Okay? This is what it looks like when it is first senior. So right now, you're essentially you would have this little box up here. That's it. Um, but down here uh, on the left, this is where things like your GPA, your class rank, uh, if you've met certain requirements, like uh, past the high school exit exam, which you have not taken yet, you'll take that your 10th grade year. Uh, that's where all that information lives. Uh, over here on the right hand side, if you're looking at this, uh, you'll be getting, you, you'll have credit requirements. These are all your graduation requirements. The only big difference from college is there, you have 220 re credits required to graduate. The only main difference is there's a one year vocational class requirement and you can pass classes with D's, and it counts towards your graduation credit. I wish we would do away with that, but I'm not in charge. Uh, so, so this is what it kind of looks like. You can see a little bit better. That's that GPA, the, the credit summary. It'll show you the number of credits required, and it's 10 credits per year per class. Uh, the credits completed in the middle, and then the credits still needed in that individual category. So if you're ever looking at a transcript, which you might do, 
when we have our four-year plan, there won't be much on there right now, but as you go along, that's how you kind of can look at that. Uh, let's see if this will work. I'm going to show you guys a quick video. So this, is, I, this isn't this last year's senior, but the year before that. I asked some seniors who were graduating to give some advice from a student perspective to incoming freshmen, and we'll see what they have to say. So let's see if I can... Is this going to work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see if it's going to... Might be thinking. Our internet's pretty bad here. I don't know if you've experienced that yet. <laughs> we'll give it another 20 seconds to see if it goes. Uh, I'm going to try to open it in the browser really quick. So I think it's pretty powerful to hear it from your peers. Hey guys, I'm Patrick McElroy, I'm your ASM president. I just, my advice to you would be to A, when you're filling up your water bottle, you gotta fill it up from the lower water fountain because the stream goes higher. And uh, also keeps the line flowing a little bit better. But also not to take high school too seriously. You gotta have a good time. Uh, I uh, took it pretty seriously my freshman year, uh, not in an academic sense so much as a I am an adult now. But it, take advantage of your non adulthood. It, it comes up to you pretty quickly, and uh, there's a lot more stuff you can get away with by the time you're uh, be before you're 18. I was best friends with a lot of my. Uh, with, with a lot of the senior class when I was a freshman, and and then with the juniors, and then with the sophomores, and year after year, they kept on graduating, and uh, now I'm trying to become closer with my with my immediate classmates, and uh, I wish I had kept that bond a little stronger beforehand. But uh, have a great time. It's gonna be great. How I did it with my top two teachers, doing what I needed to do, and always. Paying attention in the class, and that was pretty much it. Alright, so all I'd like to say is that senior year comes out really fast, that you need to stay focused all four years to get that, the best out of your high school experience, and that staying spirited and um, Taking part in activities at schools makes it go faster and more enjoyable. Um, so what I loved most about my freshman and sophomore years were that there were so many different friends that I had because our school is so small, and it's really important to take advantage of how small the school is and that you can be friends with everyone. If I could do something differently, I would have stressed less and had more fun being in school and just doing fun activities. As an upperclassman, I wish I had been more involved in sports and activities, leadership, that sort of thing, because it's actually really fun to get involved in those sort of things, and you have a lot less free time, but it's worth it in the end. I also wish that I had more of an idea of what I wanted to do or be, or where I wanted to go to school, so I could more like up my mind as a senior, so I'm not panicking now, thinking of what am I going to do for the rest of my life. I would have thought I would do it. To freshmen, sophomores, I'd definitely say to get a close relationship with your teachers because they can help you when you're applying to college. And also, it's never too early to start looking for colleges. You should start looking at what you like and what you might want to do in the future. Definitely, as an underclassman, get more involved, have fun, join clubs, and think about what you want to do as a senior. You want to have that experience, like you're already in leadership, you kind of know what's going on, so it makes for a better senior year, you can have more fun, and you're less stressed out about everything else. So as you heard, most of them talked about fun. And that's, that's fun in a good way. It's not fun... Um, let's see that. Is that the right button? No. No. Al? All right, try to get back in here. Uh, 
So they talked about the ability to, to not stress, not take school very seriously, and to really focus on what's going on to, to improve your experience as a senior. Okay? So, so having fun is like what I talked about, where it, it can be enjoyable to come to school. Learning should be fun. Yes, homework and tests kind of are not the fun part of school. They're not fun for me either when I was in school. Most people would say the same thing. However, that's, that spurs your learning on. Okay? Second thing, not to, not to stress. Okay? That does not mean do not, do not have stress. Do not, you know, school should not be stressful, so you should not do stressful things. That is not what they're saying. They're saying plan ahead, be organized, and stay on top of your game. That is a natural stress-reducing activity. If you know what you need to do, the stress goes out the window, you've got it under control, and you make things happen. Okay? And then planning ahead is all we've been talking about. Thinking about what types of jobs, what types of colleges, what you want out of high school, and making it happen throughout all four years. Okay, so those are the four things that they really were focusing on. And, and you know, I would probably do the same thing with some of our seniors this year towards the end of the year. I skipped a year because we got really busy. Um, but I think it's really important that you guys get to know people not only in your class, like Patrick said, but also the upperclassmen. You know, the other seniors, they, they like to pull rank and that kind of stuff sometimes. Most of them are pretty cool people though. And they will have a ton of good advice for you, most of the time, um, that you can listen to. Don't listen to the bad advice. Some of them will give you bad advice. Um, most people will give you some good advice about how to manage your high school career, what they wish they would have done differently, ask them. What would you have done differently as a, as a freshman? Knowing what you know now, how would you approach it differently? They probably have some pretty good things to say. You just have to be, not be afraid to ask them. Okay? So now, Vince, the only thing I will add about this is there is an SAT prep, but again, it's changing, so it's not going to be super, super helpful at this time of the year, mainly for kind of juniors and seniors. But it's up there if you want to look at it. It's a good knowledge piece, but in terms of like the process piece, it's going to be changing for your class. So, 6.15, right, about what I expected. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I, I'd love to answer questions. It's not a now or never thing, but this is the best place probably to get an answer. Um, if you guys don't have questions and you, and you want to email me later, or leave me a voicemail, that kind of thing, feel free to. If you have any questions right now, I'd love to, to answer them. If not, shoot me an email and I can get back to you with an answer right afterwards. Okay, so I didn't bring my son So, first of all, we, do we meet already in the mornings? We haven't yet, I don't think. I think that's coming up. That's it, that's it. That's for, that's for like the end, middle of next week. Okay. I will be meeting with freshmen. We have class level meetings at the beginning of every year. Um, so we will be sitting down talking. I won't go quite in depth in all of this. I will talk about some of it. Um, but yeah, we do, we do attack it in different realms from the pathways to parent nights. And, and I do encourage, it's not required, but I encourage if a, if a student is able to come, I realize it's not the most entertaining nightly event, but it is really good information for you to hear. And sometimes it, you know, it's difficult for a parent to come home and you know, regurgitate an hour and 15 minutes worth of information. Um, so I always encourage you guys to come. I try to always bring like freebies. Uh, sometimes I bring some food or cookies or that kind of thing. Um, but really encouraging both parents and kids, more students to come and get the information. Uh, it saves everybody some time and saves everyone knowledge. So yes, I would love for students to come, but I do go over a lot of this stuff with kids. Um, not necessarily all in one huge chunk. You know, think of how you feel right now. They could probably do about half of this um, reasonably and, and understand what it means. You guys are probably like, your heads are exploding if you're paying attention. Um, but yeah, so does that answer your question? Any other questions? If not, uh, thank you guys for coming. I, I, you know, we will do some more, uh, probably one or two, maybe two more nights. Most likely, maybe one in the new year, and then one towards the end of the year, kind of orienting us for the following year and scheduling and that kind of thing. So just keep an eye out. If you don't have, if you haven't signed up for that email newsletter, the link's outside again. Hop on those folders with some resources. Look at some of those things at your own time. And again, email me if you have questions. Thank you guys for coming. Good night.
so fun. Does it come down? Could have gotten down for a walk or something. How's Madeline doing? She's doing great. She called me this morning. She uh, just finished the same old. Yeah. Oh.